Welcome back to our tutorial with OpenFast, and this is the third part. So, uh, let's begin with a summary of what we did last time. Uh, so, last time we talked about uh, Aerodyne, the module uh, of OpenFast which is used to model uh, the aerodynamic loads, and uh, we also talked about InflowWind, which is used to model the incoming wind. Uh, we saw a bit about their theory, and then uh, we modeled a fixed wind turbine which was freely rotating um, in a steady wind. Uh, we post-processed the results with uh, Python and the OpenFast toolbox for Python. And we saw that with uncontrolled uh, rotor, so we had no control and no generator, um, our rotor speed was um, too high, uh, as we can see here. So this line is for the nominal rotor speed, uh, which was designed for this tur turbine. It's about 12 uh, rotation per minute, and we can see that the rotor speed we had last time exceeded by a large margin this value. And the second uh, drawback was that we had no power output because we didn't model any generator. So today we are trying to fix both of these issues. And so we are trying to model a fixed wind turbine with a generator and a controller. Uh, so we will control the turbine in pitch and torque, and I will explain a bit more about wind turbine control in, in a few minutes. And the wind that we will use for this example will be a rumped wind, wind from 10 to 14 meters per second. It will be homogeneous in all the simulation area. Uh, this way we can see how the control uh, evolves with the increasing uh, wind. So. Uh, last time we had the simulation with Elastodyne, which was modeling the tower blade and uh, the structure. And we also used Aerodyne and InflowWind for the aerodynamic loads and incoming wind. And today uh, we want to see about the power generation and we want some control to the system. So we are going to call the Servodyne module. So this is the module that we are going to learn today. So. Before we start talking about Servodyne, um, I will uh, give you a quick reminder about wind turbine control. But first, why uh, do we need to apply some control to the wind turbine? Well, if you look at the um, incoming power to the turbine, um, its formula is, is right here. So it's uh, half of the air density times the surface of the rotor times uh, the um, uh, velocity of the incoming wind to the power of three. And if you look at how this power evolves, it increases really fast with the wind speed. So when you design a wind turbine, uh, you, you design it for a specific power, and it cannot get uh, more power than its design power uh, from the wind. So uh, at low uh, wind speed, you can get as much power as you want. So here you can see that we don't get the available power because uh, we have the best limit, so we multiply the uh, wind power by the best limit, and uh, we can get the um, power that we can uh, take from the from the wind. So at low wind speed, we can uh, take as much power as we want, but at a certain speed, uh, the generator cannot take any more power. So we need to find a way to keep it constant and to not get all the available power from the wind. So generally, wind turbine control is aimed at in the first region, we just want to accelerate the rotor. In the second region, we want to take as much power as possible. In the third region, we want to have a constant power and to limit what we take from the wind, because otherwise the generator would break. And we, there is also a fourth region, which is called the survival region. And in this one, we don't take any more power from the wind, but we try to keep the structure intact. Uh, this is designed, for example, uh, for a hurricane uh, situation. So to illustrate how the control works for the turbine, we can see this uh, plot um, here that describes the um, control parameters for a five megawatt uh, wind turbine. So in the blue, it's the pitching angle of the blades. And in uh, red, it's the torque of the generator. So in the um, low speed region, in region two, we are not pitching the blade because usually the blades are designed to get the maximum power for, from the wind, the maximum lift when they are at a zero pitch angle. 
So in this region, we're not pitching the blades, but instead we are increasing the gener generator torque because it's quite easy to show that um, in this region to take the, um, the most power from the wind, you need to increase the gen gener generator torque with the square of the wind. So this is what we do in this region. And then we get to region three. So here, the um, so in green, you can see the rotor speed. So in this region, we don't want to spin the rotor faster than we actually do. So um, we will keep the constant speed and the constant torque. So if you look at the electrical power they leave, they deliver to the generator, because we have constant uh, torque and constant speed, we have a constant power delivered. So in this region, we have a constant power. Uh, but um, we want to reduce the amount of lift that we get from the wind, because otherwise it will keep accelerating the, um, the rotor. So to reduce the lift, we will pitch the blade. Uh, in this way, we will create some stalling on the blade and we will um, keep the, the lift at a constant value, even if uh, the wind is uh, faster. So this is how you achieve control. So to summarize in region two, we will act on the um, generate on the generator torque and in region three we will act on the blade pitch it's quite a simple control but for now it will do so now that we talked about uh, general general wind turbine control uh, let's talk about how it's implemented in uh, servodyne so in servodyne uh, you can implement uh, various controllers in the form of a dll so dynamic link library in Windows, it will have the .dll uh, extension, and in uh, Mac or Linux, it will have a .so extension. Uh, basically, this interface will um, provide a few outputs to the, um, to the OpenFast code and uh, get some uh, inputs as well in order to tune the controller. Um, for us, we will use a controller that is already compiled by uh, an Ariel, um, and we will explain a bit how this controller works on the principle that we explained earlier. Uh, but you can also tune your own controller. Uh, if you want, you can use the ROSCO toolbox. Uh, so ROSCO stands for Reference Open Source Controller. Um, so if you want to, to tune a, a controller for uh, your own turbine, you can use it. It's quite uh, easy to use. And we will also make available a tutorial for this. But uh, if you want to run with the NRL 5 megawatts, you can use uh, the available controller. So um, this controller will act on the blade pitch and then the generator torque. Uh, and it will uh, me measure the generator speed um, at the exit of the code. So this is, you can say that this is open fast running and we measure the generator speed. So first thing that the generator speed will do, it will uh, determine the control region in which uh, we stand. And depending on the control region, we will apply a different strategy. If we are in a region um, uh, one or two, uh, we will uh, tune the torque and we will adjust the torque and set the torque to a specific uh, value depending on the, uh, on the speed of the generator. And we will send it back to open fast. And if, you're, if we are in region two, we are not touching the, 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 pitch, uh, the blade pitch value. So it will be set to zero. And if we are in region three, so here we will set a, a fixed value to the torque and um, we will uh, apply some uh, proportional integral control to the blade pitch. Uh, the gain of the, um, of the proportional integral control will be decided um, by, the, um, by a, a gain table. So we already, the so NRL pre-computed the best gains at each uh, wind speed. So we look in the table for the gain, uh, which gain uh, we want to apply. And we apply this gain to the proportional and integral factor. And then we add them and we apply some limits and we get the pitch command that we apply to the blades. So this is basically how this controller works. If you want more detail, you can look at um, this article. But uh, for us, it will, uh, it will do uh, for now. So now let's uh, look at our uh, input files for open. So here are my inputs for this uh, OpenFast simulation. 
So we already uh, know some of the files. So we have the, the blade uh, file, so the blade aerodynamic data and the blade mechanical data. We have the configuration file for aerodyne, elastodyne, and inflow wind. We have the tower mechanical properties. We have the FST files, and we have the air, we have the airfoil folder for aerodyne. And what we have uh, now is we added the servodyne uh, for, uh, file. So let's open it and see uh, what we can set inside. So here, a uh, very little thing to say. Um, we set the pitch control mode to five, so we can see what five is. If we want to use the bladed style uh, dynamic link library, so it's OK. And same for um, the generator control. And that's about it. So we can also, we have to specify the DLL file that we are going to use. Because I'm on the window, I will use the .dll extension. Um, and we can set the output that we want. So here we want to know the generator torque and generator power. And that's the only thing we, we need to do. Um, let's see if we have everything. So now we need to use the dynamic link library. Um, I will show you where we can find it. So in order to find the .dll file, I'm going to the OpenFast uh, GitHub page. And I will go to the OpenFast uh, subgroup. Then I will uh, go to the releases section. In this section, I will navigate to the um, OpenFast, OpenFast version 3.1 uh, version, because um, there is no uh, DLL for the version 3.2, but the one from for version 3.2 3.1 will work. So we we'll navigate to this release. So here we are, and we can go to the assets section at the end of the release. Here. And here uh, we can download uh, a zip file with the compiled DLL. And once we open the zip file, uh, we can access the DLL here. So these two DLL are compiled specifically for floating uh, platforms, uh, namely the ITI barge and the OC3 uh, SPA platform. But we will just use the classic uh, DLL. So this is the one that we are going to copy to our folder. So now that, now that we have the DLL file, um, we I have one last thing to set is, uh, as I said, we want to have uh, a wind that ramps from 10 to 14 meters per second. So we will do that in uh, inflow wind. We set inflow wind to work with a wind type two. So it's a uniform wind. Um, so with this parameter, we need to have um, an input file with the specific wind that we want to run. So I put mine in input data and ramp wind. So I will open this file to see what I set. I have it here. So this is the steps for the wind. At zero seconds, it's at 10 uh, meters per second. And at 600 seconds of simulation, it's a it is at 14 meters per second. So we are good. And now uh, the last thing that we have to, to do is to uh, parameterize the FST file to call for the Servodyne module. So we did it here. We will use Servodyne and we specify uh, where to look for the Servodyne uh, configuration file. And now we can launch the simulation. So I am calling for my OpenFast executable. If you don't have it, you can look at the first video where we explain how to use and uh, how to install and use it. And I will call for my FST file, and I'm, I'm pressing Enter. And the simulation is starting. So I will fast forward to the end of the simulation. So see you in a bit.
Okay, so our simulation just finished. So now we can have a look at the results. So first, uh, let's see the home folder. And we can see that like, like last time, we have the out file with the um, tabular data and the out B file. So the same in a binary format that have been added to our home folder. And then now we will open them with uh, Visual Studio. Uh, so with Python. Uh, so like last time we are using the open fast toolbox a fast output file uh, function to open the to open the um, the out file and we can visual visualize the results so first let's have a look at the wind velocity um, and here open fast did exactly what what we asked as there is a, a ramp from 10 to 14 meters per second over a range of 600 seconds so that's good um, we can look at the um, generator uh, speed, uh, the rot rot rotor speed. Uh, last time we uh, had nothing to slow the rotor down, so it went to some 20 uh, rotation per minute, which is uh, uh, way too much compared to what the turbine was designed for. And now we can see that once we get to a certain level, the rotor speed is fixed at uh, 12 uh, rotation per minute, because we now have the generators that will slow it down and that will uh, compensate for the um, aerodynamic forces. And we can illustrate the rotor torque. So here it is. So at the beginning, because the rotor is not spinning enough, the rotor torque is um, disabled. And once the, gener the, the rotor spins uh, fast enough, uh, we have um, the torque that starts. And then um, it uh, slowly increases in the there is a transition region between uh, region two and region three. So here it transitions, and then it, it uh, reaches a plateau uh, at the rate of the torque once um, the, we enter the region three. Uh, for the blade pitch is the opposite. So we can look at the blade pitch. At first, we don't pitch the blade. And then when, once we get to region three, we start pitching the blades. So here we can see that the pitch angle will uh, increase. With the, with the wind velocity. And lastly, we can have a look at the generator power. So now we do produce some power. So at the beginning, we accelerate the rotor so we don't produce anything. Then in region two, uh, we produce uh, but below than the rated uh, power. And once we enter region three, we will produce uh, five uh, megawatts of power. So everything works uh, smoothly now. And the controller is, um, is well tuned for uh, our turbine. Um, so that, that, that will be all for today. Uh, next time we will look at uh, more um, intricate uh, wind uh, generation because here we just have a homogeneous uh, wind. So next time we'll have uh, more complex winds and uh, we will start looking at uh, offshore wind turbine. So see you uh, next time.